let's take camera one in Korean, okay? So we have it right there and hopefully this is it. So I'll copy this text string and I'll show you that this panel can actually work with inputs in UTF-8 format and you'll see in this display it shows the label in actual Korean. Up here we have the master volume that's always available so you can see the master fader inside the vMix uh, interface is being moved as I am operating that one. vMix is a surprising package that works from just a laptop to huge productions with hundreds of inputs. And for those professional broadcast applications of vMix, Skahoy is proud to offer the Mega Panel modules to deliver you a premium control experience. The Mega Panel has clear OLED displays and Japanese NKK broadcast style buttons. There's also the Skahoy Custom Premium T-Bar over here with an LED ring for color-coded identification. The Skahoy Mega Panel is modular, so you can add or remove sections depending on your production. For instance, the MK48 is the crosspoint surface serving the input delegation, while the MKT1A or B is the transition block that has keys for menu, for key transition selection, etc. Reactor is the panel software that makes all of this super easy to manage the order of your switch inputs, for example, on the buttons. What you're looking at right here is a uh, one ME mega panel, but you can have a second ME row up here that would basically be the same controllers, but working on vMix with a different bus, like the Mix 2 or 3 or 4 bus on vMix. But now we're just focusing on a single of these buses and how that would work. Having two MK48 modules means that you have 12 uh, columns of buttons and displays on each of these, so adding up to a total of 24 of um, inputs with direct access. But I want to highlight that you can scale that up with shift keys. So in this case, on um, this configuration, we have added two shift keys. If you uh, hold down the first one or you press it like this, so you basically get to input 23 up to 44 and then from 45 up to 66. That's how it works. And those inputs are available inside of Reactor. So you can see here, the vMix inputs can be color-coded and rearranged in an interface that's very easy to understand. You can actually add custom labels. So uh, let's do that for a single input key over here. Or let's just select um, something else. So uh, if, we, if we take like this one, that would be number 13, right? Then uh, we want to change a different... Um, so it says uh, Seoul, which is the capital of Korea, South Korea. So we'll just change this and then pick another color here. So let's make this dark blue. What we'll see right now is that the label was changed according to what we did. And we also put in a dark blue in the color bar just above the buttons. Actually, what we can do, we could go to, let's take camera one in Korean, okay? So we have it right there and hopefully this is it. So I'll copy this text string and I'll show you that this panel can actually work with inputs in UTF-8 format and you'll see in this display it shows the label of that I just put into this uh, table here in actual Korean. So I'm crossing my fingers that this was correct but I'm sure people who need this like Japanese, Korean, Chinese, uh, even Danish, <laughs> Danish has special characters as well will easily manage to use this because it's just so easy to add colors and alternative labels. But even if you just want to rely on the labels from vMix, that will be put into your control surface and shown in the displays uh, exactly as you would expect. So now I've color coded a few more inputs right here for your convenience. Uh, so you can see that this is really easy to work with and customize in Reactor over here. So that was the shift keys. They actually are pretty clever because if you press them once, they are toggling. But if you press and hold, so after a second, release it again, it's going to fall back. So those are pretty nice in that sense. And um, the inputs you can select are usually also being delegated on this row of buttons. So that gives me a chance to talk about what you can select on the upper row up here. So this is actually managed by our menu. And currently, if I go into my menu, I have... Um, 
overlay output selected. It means, if I just press this again, that I can select what output goes to output number two, three, four, full screen one and two, and then we go into a section with overlays here. So actually, uh, we are currently selected output two. I can press one of these inputs that will be delegated to output two. I can also press program over here. If it's program I want to delegate, I can now select output number three instead and I could go to output number four to full screen and so on. And it's all shown in this title line on the displays what I am delegating to on these buttons, okay? So that's that. If we go to overlays here, then I'm now selecting sources for overlay. So you can follow along on the vMix interface and you can see if I press number one, then I'm selecting overlay number one on input source number one. I can go to five and then you see this is being selected and so on. Also notice over here, the overlay is set to be on. So actually overlay one, two, three, and four are shown on these keys and I can toggle them on and off here. And I can also put them on preview from these buttons over here. So it's basically remembering the last selected overlay. And that's a very, very useful feature that it does this. So on my overlay number one here, if I select number four, it is being remembered over here for a toggle on and off function. Um, so that's how the overlays are being implemented to give you more convenience that you are otherwise used to with uh, vMix in this case. To just go through the menu over here, we have also shortcuts and pressing shortcuts means that we now have access to 24 shortcuts on the upper row here and the labels for the displays will also be taken from vMix into the panel. So there's the title, there's text line one and two, and they are applied on the displays. You can see text line one and two used over here while there's only a single text line in use here, or maybe none at all, and it will just show the shortcut number. And then we have two keys that are in fact importing thumbnails and icons from vMix as well. That's actually a live image. I think this is one of the sources we have. It looks like this could be input number, let me see on the screen, 15 or something like that, that are actually shown uh, on this uh, icon. Hey, it's a black and white icon and it may not make a whole lot of sense with an, um, a, a color image from vMix but it's there and you can use it as you want, if you want. So that's how the shortcuts are implemented. Talking about the multi-view and vMix, a very um, interesting feature here as well. You can also delegate uh, the multi-viewer. So right now, notice that this row of button is still uh, in a different color and that's actually because it's associated with what we did uh, last, which was um, over on the output section here, we were delegating overlays. So the color ring means something. So notice what happens now that I, I press one of these buttons for my multi-view destination. Multi-view destination, let's take number three here, then these buttons are changing over to a green color. And I can now delegate, and it's actually shown here, it's multi-view destination number three, layer source, layer one source. Hmm. How do I change the layer? Actually in the menu you now have two options for the multi-view. You can either select this uh, the uh, the destination on the top row or you can select the layer on the top row so by pressing that i can now select which layer i'm delegating to and you see it also shown in the title line in the bigger displays so i can now delegate to um i think that source was not available one of these must be available uh, so it's only some of them that are available and it will delegate those sources to destination three layer number six on the panel then we have two uh, user sections. It means that uh, on the upper row, there are buttons reserved for user functionality, and that is something you can program in the configuration tab inside of Reactor. So that's for a different video on another day. And there are two of those user banks, as you can see. Then let's look at audio. If we go to audio, you see that audio for the sources that does support it is available up here. So how is that actually managed on a button, you may ask. But these are four-way buttons, so they can detect your press on either edge of the button, and it means that if I press on the right edge, it's increasing the value. On the left edge, it's decreasing the value. If I press and hold the lower edge, it's resetting the value to its reset um, or default value. And if I press the, the upper edge, I can do it over here. Um, also, you can see there's a little icon that indicates that we are now in course mode. Course means that 
as I am pressing the edges, it is taking much larger steps than you otherwise would. If I do it on this one, I think you can see it in the interface. There you can see that I'm adjusting the, the, uh, the um, input volume of channel number seven here by pressing the edges. If I press and hold, you can see the steps are somewhat smaller to allow you finer adjustments of the audio on this channel. Up here we have the master volume that's always available. So you can see the master fader inside the vMix. Uh, interface is being moved as I am operating that one. So that was the audio section. Then we have settings here where I can uh, basically an engineering menu where I can change which vMix system am I working on and I change to system number two which is not being set up but this is mind-blowing guys. This means that if I added another vMix device in here and if I set its device ID to two I would now have access to that vMix system. You can add as many of those as you want. I think there must be some practical limits to it, but theoretically there is no limit. But this is basically giving you up to 10 vMix systems that you can uh, swap between on the mega panel here. So that's pretty neat as well. The rest of these are basically adjusting the brightness of this place and buttons and so on. Just keep it at medium unless you are in a very low light facility, then this might be too much light for you. But I think in the studio today it's pretty good as it is. Okay, so let's exit this menu and look at what we have over here. First of all, we talked about having the overlays toggling on and off over here, but we also have the preview that we can enable on these buttons. So that's pretty neat as well. We can see this the, the preview on the uh, vMix interface and then of course there'll be um, um, possible to uh, then uh, toggle in with the um, um, program enabling of the overlays. And notice one of those cool things I mentioned when I talked about overlays over here is that it remembers the last selected source you have. So you get an actual toggle button for that overlay. We also have, um, if I hold down shift here, you, you have a pretty nice little feature that allows you to zoom those overlays. And I want to just see if we can bring up some meaningful overlay like this here. And then if I hold down shift, you can see that I can zoom in and out of this overlay by a simple press of this button. That's very useful as well. As I'm holding down shift, you also see that these buttons related to uh, execution of transitions are um, uh, changing over to additional transitions like stingers one to four. And um, so, uh, but now I'm just executing one by pressing the button here. So you can see I'm making a wipe, I'm having a fade, or I'm uh, running stinger number one here and uh, I can make something called a vertical um, uh, slide, which is a very fast transition. So those transition times are again managed by four-way buttons right here. So let's just change this transition time a little bit uh, to something more realistic. So, um, okay, let's at least get close to a second here. So let's try once again. And you see, there you go. It's, it's a, a much better speed for this slide transition that we wanted to uh, execute. Well, basically, um, what we have here is, um, um, yeah, so that was a button that I, I didn't talk about before. Obviously, you want to select your mixed rows as well. So that's up here on the mega panel, and you can even see that it's communicating to you what ME it's on. We are using the um, term ME because it's uh, often used for the um, what vMix called, calls a mix. And uh, so we are now on ME2, and that affects everything over here as well. Uh, absolutely, it affects how these uh, sources um, uh, are being selected and so on. We'll see that forth and back here that there are different selections for active and preview uh, depending on that. Um, but the transition times, for instance, are, are not shown because those only apply on the first ME row. So those features that are not available on the other buses are taken out of the equation there. Obviously, we also have the the T-bar um, on the um, uh, MKT-1A and uh, I can't remember if this is A or B but I mentioned that we have two versions of this. Why? Because if you have a multi-ME setup of a mega panel it means that one of these will be up here and you generally don't want to have T-bars in the same column on your mega panel. So this is why we have one where this is swapped around. So the A and the B version is really what you want to have one of each if you have a 2ME mega panel for your vMix installation because then the T-bars won't collide with, the, with each other as you use them. But let's just use the T-bar here and we can see that we have a very nice and smooth wipe transition uh, as I'm pulling the T-bar handle through this. So yeah, that's how a T-bar works 
as you would expect. We have cut, we have fade to black, which is not shown in the vMix interface, but only on the output. And then finally, we have auto transition of fade uh, on the last key down here. Ladies and gentlemen, I think this is really the mega panel for vMix. I want to point out one thing, because if you have um, studied what we can actually do with vMix, there are so many details which are not presented on this panel. But keep in mind that we have accessory modules for the mega panel. Basically, um, additional modules that fit very well on the right side for additional adjustments. So all the things in vMix that we have not broken out on the ME section belongs over on the auxiliary modules. One of those could be the uh, MKA4, which is, uh, I think, 42 buttons, four-way buttons, where you can build your own menu layers of functionality that you would like to have in addition to what you have right here. So that is definitely the choice you would make to have access to even more than what you already find on this ME row. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed what you saw. We are really excited about bringing this mega panel out for the vMix community to enable professional broadcast applications with vMix. We really believe in that software. This is why we have spent so much time on making these amazing configurations. And if you have any questions, reach out to our sales team, reach out to our support team. They would be happy to answer your questions, whatever they might be. You can also follow us on social media if you want to stay updated on all the news from Skahoy. Subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss a beat in our video production as well. We are posting news all year round about things that you care about.